The CPU inside this PC is the Ryzen 7 5700G, the most powerful APU from AMD. Now the question is, once you get the money or the chance, you have your dedicated graphics card, something like the RTX 3060 Ti. How much of a performance improvement are you going to get in creative applications? Let's find out. Are you sick of seeing activate Windows message on your desktop? Well, it's time to activate your Windows and do it cheap. Go on to whokeys.com where you can find official license keys. If you're looking for Windows 10 Pro key, for example, then all you have to do is search for Windows 10 Pro, select the license and add it to the basket. Use the code TN20 to get a 20% discount. Once you have the license key on your email, click here, here, type in your license key, hit activate and you're all done. Check out whokeys.com in the description below and don't forget to use the code TN20 to get a 20% discount. So I'm gonna leave all the links for these parts in the description below. So if you wanna pick up any of these things that I'm talking about, the affiliate links are in the description below. I get a small commission if you do use those links. So thanks very much if you choose to do that. It just keeps this channel alive and awesome content coming your way. Now looking at Photoshop, first of all, when are we adding the dedicated GPU over here, the RTX 3060 Ti from Gigabyte Aorus Elite to be precise, we are getting 1.9% performance boost. And that is literally nothing. It could be within the margin of error. I'd say like up to 2% is within the margin of error, but I did all my tests three times and then calculated the average of those tests. But on Photoshop, basically, we're not getting any noticeable performance improvement from a dedicated graphics card. Moving on to Lightroom Classic, this is the most interesting bit. Now, I was constantly getting slightly slower or lower scores with the dedicated graphics card. In overall, the average of three tests, I was getting 1.6% slower scores or lower scores with the dedicated graphics card. Now, this just means that if you're a photographer and you're using Lightroom and Photoshop, the dedicated graphics card basically gives you next to zero performance, nothing like it massively changes for you. Getting an APU like that makes a ton of sense. Now let's move on to the video editing softwares like Premiere, After Effects and DaVinci Resolve. We start with the Premiere Pro. In the extended overall scores, we are gaining 160.9% of performance and that is absolutely huge. In the standard overall performance, we're gaining slightly less and that is 158% performance. Regardless, Premiere Pro likes to have a very good graphics card and a very good CPU. And if you don't have either of them, you're gonna lose a lot of the performance. So if you're editing on Premiere Pro, adding a dedicated graphics card like this one is a massive performance improvement for you. In After Effects, adding a dedicated graphics card, we're getting 21.7% performance, which is quite a decent amount but regardless, doesn't make your life much faster. It depends what you're doing. Some things in Adobe After Effects are GPU supported, but most of them aren't. So depending what's your workflow in After Effects, things like that. But in DaVinci Resolve, standard over a score, and we have the Studio and Free version. Both of them tested on the DaVinci Resolve 17.3 latest version. Now, in the Studio version, so the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, we're gaining 175% performance. And in the Free version, we're getting 162% of the performance, which basically tells us that DaVinci Resolve loves to have a powerful GPU because a lot of the things gets done on the GPU as well, which is in a way a good thing because if you have a GPU, it's utilized very well and you get a good performance. But the bad thing is if you don't have a dedicated GPU, then DaVinci Resolve really doesn't work so well. Now let's talk about some of the things you should be looking out for or some of the downsides when upgrading this system or similar system to a graphics card like this one. First of all, when installing the graphics card, it isn't as simple as just plugging a graphics card in there, connecting it up and turning the PC on because what you're gonna see is most likely just a black screen. And the reason for that is because the drivers don't match. You've got AMD drivers, but an NVIDIA GPU and they just don't work together. What you basically have to do is go into the safe mode of Windows, uninstall the drivers, turn the PC off, put the new graphics card in, turn the PC back on and then install the new drivers and then you're gonna get it 
to work. Now, if you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comment section below and hit that subscribe button. Maybe we can make that happen. But this is just something you need to look out for when changing an AMD APU and adding an NVIDIA graphics card to that. Another downside when adding a dedicated graphics card to this APU or AMD APUs is that the iGPU inside the processor is quite useless in creative applications. Now, the applications can't quite utilize it and then the drivers and just it's more for like gaming rather than you know creative applications where we look at the intel systems and they have the quick sync and the igpu inside the intel processes you know on benchmark is actually much less powerful than the amd igpu it's actually much more useful in the creative applications um, just as you can see on my channel on some of the uh, benchmarks that i've done especially check out the comparison between this 5700g and 11900k both of these running exactly the same test setup but don't have a dedicated graphics card that was interesting to see the timeline performance in premiere pro and how you can see that intel's much better utilizes the graphics cards than amd now another thing to look out for and sometimes is the downside is that the amd apus are all capped at pci 3.0 support so your graphics card is going to run at you know pci 3.0 all speeds between the by 16 slot and also your ssds or m.2 drives are going to run at 3.0 drive even if you put a dedicated graphics card there it's just not capable of doing it if you want 4.0 pca 4.0 then you need non-apu from amd like 3000 series or 5000 series cpus and last downside that you need to look out for or think about is that regardless of being an awesome system over here for photographers for example if your workflow or if how you're editing photos requires more than one display unfortunately the motherboards most of the time or most of the motherboards except maybe some exemptions have only one video output in our case we have one hdmi out so in conclusion in the video editing applications having a dedicated graphics card is a huge 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 thing but not so much in the photo editing applications so if you want to build a small system maybe small itx or so small compact system having just an apu like this one over here is a great great thing and if you're a photographer you should really consider this and maybe not spending too much on a dedicated graphics card because it's really a waste of money in your workflow unless you're doing some other things as well as always if you found this video helpful hit that like button subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you in the next one links for all the parts are in the description below thanks guys for watching Bye bye